is up 1320 fans and welcome back to another episode of 1320 garages today we are in phoenix arizona checking out a collection that takes i'm gonna say a lot more work than normal to more. keep clean so let's go check it out right now what's up what's up guys i'm jordan welcome to my garage All right, Jordan, I would love to start here for obvious reasons, but let's start upstairs. Okay. So show us what we got upstairs. Yeah. Just wanted a cool place to hang out with my friends and uh, store the cars. I was paying like a mortgage payment and like rental, like for with other places, getting everything stored. Sure. So we ended up finding this building like December of 19. And- uh, Right before COVID. Right before COVID. <laughs> so up here, we got what a hangout area. We got a mini office, an office, and what all we got? Yeah, so I've kind of built this room out. Just wanted some of my friends to be able to come up here if they're doing like the work from home thing. Just kind of work from uh, work from here during the day. That's the sim room over there. Um, kind of a weird space. I didn't really know what to do with it. So we threw the sim in there and then we do F1, F1 race days up here. We'll do like throw it up on the TV, watch it on the TV. Really? Yeah. All right, pretty, yeah. this is a pretty cool area to be. This is, you and your friends just come here and just chill. Yeah, just hang out, man, car stuff. This is like a dream garage for car guys. Yeah, trying, man. The guy that did this building before me, Wayne Gretzky actually owned this building. He spec'd it out, he did the remodel. He did actually a stellar job on it. Like the floor to ceiling glass is something that you can't do anymore with zoning restrictions. So I think his celebrity status probably really helped with that. <laughs> um, and that was just kind of the way it came to be, man. So I wish I could say I had a bunch of, uh, you know, input in this, but he just designed it so freaking well. I couldn't, I couldn't have done any better. Well, let's check out the view here from your office. Cause this, this is probably the favorite part for a lot of car guys would be to have an office and then look down on all their freaking cars right here. Yeah, the view's the best part. It's fun to just chill in here and then, you know, you get your work day done, you can go down there, tinker around, clean up. I feel like with cars, you're never done, right? Oh, always, no, ever. Yeah, you're always working on something. So it's just kind of cool to go down there. I finally got my toolboxes. Um, I'm gonna get a two post lift where the M3s are right now. So I'll finally be able to tinker on my own stuff, which I'm really super stoked about. Very nice, yeah. very nice. And maybe a couple four post lists when you run out of space here. That needs to happen. Yeah, <laughs> we're, needs we're to out happen. of room. Yeah, it's like a sardine can down there. Oh, shop fridge. We gotta check out the shop fridge. Yeah, shop it's fridge, like dude. It's pretty barren right now. I'm actually pretty upset about it. It's a good thing that we're drinking all the beer uh, and water, but uh, like, obviously, man, not everyone loves the IPAs because they're a apparently weird beer. not. <laughs> I know. All the Coors Lights gone, all the American beers are gone. <laughs> so there's some Blue Moon left, and that's about it. Well, this is the best lighting I've seen out of the shop fridges that we've seen Dude, so I far. I think it was pretty sick. Right? I can't remember the company I got Wait, it from. Wait, did the lights just change? Yes, they change. What? I just thought that was so rad. All right, all right. Now let's go check out the 5,000 square foot of heaven. That all right, we got cool. Downstairs. So yeah, it's a little over 5,000 square foot down here. Part of the, the remodel, he did six HVAC units. So the entire building is HVAC, which is really important in the summer. If you ever want to work on anything, uh, where the Porsche is over there, there's a nice wash bay. You can put oh, those- let's go check it. Yeah, yeah. But the Porsche is on top of the drain right now. But what you do is you take these tarps and they drilled holes in the concrete and you set up the wash bay so you can wash your car. It doesn't splash anything really? else like within the garage. I thought that was so sweet. Cause I started to notice like all of this looked a little bit weird, the coloration, but this is just like, um, just so you can get wet. It's not going to soak into okay. the paint. Gotcha. So yeah, yeah, I thought it was really cool. Wait, is that a, is that a real Lamborghini dealership <sighs> sign? That is. So fun story about that is I bought that at Barrett Jackson. We probably had too much Coors Light. Let's go check it yes. out. Let's go check There's it out. There's an exhaust on it. So I'm sorry that it looks kind of janky, but we bought this at Barrett and my goal was, I was like, I'm gonna put this in my house. I'm gonna put it like as cool wall art. And what happened was if you have four or five Coors Lights, your spatial recognition gets really far off. <laughs> so my, my buddy picks up the sign and he's like, hey, I got the sign, it looks great. Where do you want me to drop it? He sends me a picture. It is taking up the entire bed of his 25 foot flatbed tow truck. <laughs> so I'm just like, oh my God. So it has kind of just been here chilling for a little while. I think we're gonna hang it up somewhere, but um, yeah, the funny story of the Lambo sign is that this will actually not fit in a two-car garage in a house or inside of your house whatsoever. From, from ex experience. Yeah, from know. experience. Yeah, so don't drink and bid, folks. You know? 
this is like a dr like I said, I'll say this several times in this video, but dream garage setup. Thanks, man. Having all your cars here, the cool hangout space. You said 1,100 square foot up there. Yeah, a little over 1,100 and a little over 5,000 down God, here. That's awesome. All right. So, yep. Now that we've seen the garage, we yeah. want to get the part that people actually care about. So let's start. I don't care where we start. We gotta start talking about your cars. Okay. Where, yeah. So we start. I think we'll start with this E46. Um, so I kind of bought this as a just uh, A to B car for like road trips for work. It actually has 120,000 miles on it, no. but the guy took phenomenal care of it. It looks great. Yeah, so it gets decent gas mileage. I love it. He spec'd everything super duper well. I've made some small changes to it, but um, this is just a great like go rip. Um, 89A is a cool twisty road that we have here. So mm -hmm. it's a great 89A car and it's just a cool little rig, man. And this is actually my wife's car. I ordered this car as a surprise for her. It is a uh, twilight purple metallic through individual program. You can order any BMW, any color you want. And I did not know that. And so it took about a year to or a year from order date to landing. Uh, Rolls Royce color, it's twilight purple metallic. It's a six speed comp package. So I think this car in this configuration is one of one. I was just about to say this has to be a one of one. Yeah, so I think this one of one in this, in this configuration. And now twilight purple metallic when this car landed, it kind of blew up a little bit on social and there's a lot of twilight purple metallic M3s out there. Gotcha. But it's cool gotcha. that it was, I think it was one of the first for a while. Very nice. All right, now this is going to kind of throw things off a little bit compared yes. to all the other cars that you have. Yes. These next three are kind of weird. Yeah, they are, right? But I mean, like when I was in high school, my buddy had a Prelude, 2.2 liter VTEC. Mm -hmm. It was essentially a rocket ship. It was like the fastest car I'd ever been in. <laughs> so I just always had like a super special place in my heart because it was like, I don't know. Like I said, you know, what is it? Like low 15s were really fast in 2002, 2003. Right. So for a stock four cylinder car. So I just thought this car was so cool. I ended up buying this from some older lady really in Washington and she only put 22,000 miles on it since the day she bought it. Really? So it was in really, really good condition. Cars from Washington don't seem to get really screwed up. No rock chips, no rust. So I just thought this car was super cool, ultra clean. If you guys want to come take a look, I can show you. I just have to give her credit for taking such good care of it oh, because sure. like, look at the shift knob is like still matte. The interior yes. is absolutely beautiful. And then we're moving on. This is a, yep, this is a 99 SI. This is only a 13,000 mile car. So Jeez. where do you find these cars? So this was on Bring a Trailer, but this was kind of before the used car market Exploded. explosion of 2021, 2022. Right. So I got this car for a very fair deal. And now I look at it today and it's just like eye watering how, how much they've gone up in value. Right. So I have uh, the stock parts to stock suspension. And I just found new old stock SI wheels that I purchased. So I'm gonna put this car back to, back to stock basically and just kind of enjoy it as a nice low mileage stock car. Nice. SRT4, also known, as, also known as God's Chariots. God's you know? Ch what did you just say? It's God's Chariot. God's Chariot. Yeah, you're damn right. So this is a stage three car, dealer installed stage three. And I just think these cars were so cool. $19,000 when I bought this car, I had my pay they slid the payment over and it was $298 a month and I'm like, this is the most amount did of money you, Did you buy seen. this car new? Yeah, 2005. Oh, Yeah. okay. So, yeah, this is a dealer installed stage three car. And I just was like, this is so much money. I left the dealership. I called to get insurance on it and the insurance was 480 a month. So I basically, cause I was too young. So I lived to just basically an insurance and drive this car. All my money from work went to the, um, but it was just too cool. And I mean, I just think $19,000, it hurt five O's feelings, you know, mm -hmm. before they stock bolt on for bolt on. I mean, it was 400 wheel horsepower and, it just boogied, man. I just thought they were so cool. <laughs> Very yeah. nice. And of course, black. Can we just address this real quick? Yeah. The whole of the rest of the cars, pretty much, we're about to go over. Yeah. Are black. And yes. We mentioned outside that you, this is like probably one of the hardest collections to keep clean. Yeah. Why black? Let's talk about that. Real sure, quick. sure. So that '56 over there is really important. We'll get to that. But I grew up next to an old hot rodder, and he had all black cars. And I kind of thought the same thing. I'm like, they're so hard to keep clean. And he just always said to me, he said, you can always tell if the guy takes care of his car, but when it's black, you can really tell if they take care of their car. Gotcha. I just always thought that was a uh, really cool. And then probably just like imprinting from a young age, I just like idolized all these black cars. And mm -hmm. I mean, it just became a really expensive lesson to learn at like 12 <laughs> or 13, right? And I think we're gonna put our detailers kid through college. Oh, for possibly sure. Possibly Harvard, <laughs> get a PhD. <laughs> Okay, so is this a ACR or is this a... It's ACR Extreme. Okay. We actually track this car quite a bit out at Apex Motor Club. It's been to Chuck Walla. Um, these are just in stock form, pound for pound, like I think one of the best track cars you can buy. Beast. It's beast just star. absolutely insane. The G-Force is ridiculous, so much so that, you know, with there's no harnesses in this car, which I'm going to put in, but I mean, you're really struggling to stay in the seat. It's mm -hmm. just crazy how good these cars are. Uh, Demon, this is actually the first car that I ever spec'd out and ordered new. I just think these cars are so cool. I understand it's like a rental car unibody and you know, it's got, you know, people can say what they want about them. Mm -hmm. They're definitely kind of boats, but 
it is just so wild to drive. You know, they make really good power, I think. And what was the power on these? 840? Oh, uh, yeah, with the high 100 octane mode. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, you have that high octane mode button that you got in the crate. The crate was a dollar. And I mean, it's kind of like a total mullet, dude. You know, when you floor it, it's super sketchy. It kind of walks all over the road, factory drag radials. Okay, so this is a car that not. People that probably look at it, other than the wide body, they're like, oh, it's just Mercedes. This is actually a pretty special car. They are, this car is super special. It's a CLK63, this is a black series. And I think that manufacturers today are, I think they just kind of put stickers on cars mm -hmm. and it, it's really not that much different than the base car. Whereas this, you know, Olin's coilovers from the factory, like so much bracing, it's a super rigid ride. Oh yeah. You know, the wide body is just super DTM inspired. I just kind of feel like this was like the last great, like, up series cars. Like Black Series, AMG's, AMG's done really well at continuing to do that, but I just think with everything today, it's just like, I love the Demon, like no disrespect to it, but mm -hmm. it's just a Challenger with an enormous engine in it yep. and a different rear end, right? So whereas this, there's a lot of like little fine art changes, the rear differentials out of like basically the DTM race cars, it has uh -huh. a rear diff cooler, which I mean, who's doing that in 2008? So it right. was so actually a buddy's car, he passed away, and I thought the family was gonna keep all of his cars and he knew his friends knew I wanted it. We always talked about trading for this car one day and the family was nice enough to sell me the car. So I went nice. to Minnesota and picked it up and it's probably not gonna go anywhere. It'll be here for a long time. All right, moving on. This is an R35. We're used to seeing R35s, but there's like a badge on it, T-Spec, what, what do we Yeah, so, at? you know, I bought, this is this is a T-Spec and this is the kind of the last hoorah they said for the R35 and then they ended up announcing they're gonna keep making it for another year. <laughs> but thank you, Nissan. So what is T-Spec exactly? So it's just like as limited edition. It's like the track edition. It's not quite a Nismo. It has Nismo front fenders. It has carbon ceramic brakes, a forest green interior, some little forest new- Forest green? Yeah, yeah. Show me cool, this real man. quick. That's actually one of my favorite parts. I like parts. green, so. The coolest part of this car though is it's midnight purple. So the midnight purple really pops on like this really nice green. It's like a really nice color. The wheel's done in it. It's got like a cool suede headliner that's got this really unique stitch pattern so in it. So it's like, it's like between a, a base model and a Nismo. It's got some Nismo yes. parts, but it's not a yep. Nismo. Yep, gotcha. it's like the, the track edition dry carbon spoiler. But I think the big thing is that they made Millennium Jade and Midnight Purple. So I think it's almost like something in between like Midnight Purple 2 and 3. It's really cool. So how many of these did they make? 33 Midnight Purples and I think 22 Millennium Jades. You were just weren't gonna tell me that part? Yeah, yeah, really, it's kind of a rare <laughs> car, you know? I literally, I'm looking at it more as I can now see the purple. Yeah, so it's Midnight Purple. Kind of breaks the rules, but I mean, it's Midnight Purple. It's I thought it was black. Before it. you told me, I thought it was black, to be honest with you, just cause, yeah. Yeah, you had, okay. had to do it, had to do it. All right, so Midnight Purple R35, and now we go to a V-Spec 2 R34? Yeah, so this is a this you had is to one, top it somehow. Yeah, <laughs> this is one of the Fed legal. This is a Fed legal Motor X car. I think there's 1734s now. Okay. So kind of a unique story on this car. My buddy called me and was like, "Hey, we just got a buy bid on a Skyline because the guy wanted so much, we declined it." But mm -hmm. I looked through the card and he's like, "It's an R34. It's a Motor X car." So I was at a work conference and I'm just like, "I have to call you right back." So like, <laughs> I ran away from my booth and. Promptly called him back and I'm like, is the car real? Like, did you see it? And he's like, yeah, I have a picture of it. Dude, it looks really nice. So it had 32,000 kilometers on it when I bought it. So a super low mileage right. car. And I started to do some research. The car checked out and it took about two weeks to transact the car. The reason I wanted to check with the NHTSA and make sure it was legitimate. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing is, is that on the bond release for this car from the NHTSA, the guy that signed it still worked there. So when I called, he answered the phone in the first like two rings, which seems insane to me that someone in the federal government would answer the phone right away. Right. And he was like, oh yeah, let me check and see if that VIN's in my sheet. He's like an old Motor X car. And you kind of like hear him, he's like digging through paperwork. He's like, yep, I got that VIN number. So I asked for a copy of it, paid $22. I had the original wet ink one that came with the car, but I just wanted for insurance to have another one. Right. It came from them just because I didn't want to have any issues, but it's real, checked out. Sean Morris was super cool in like verifying it. And there was only 11 that were found at the time and this car was number 12. So they knew the car came, but they just didn't know it was in a private collection for a right. long time. And so Motorex were the guys that brought them over, made them legal or whatever yeah, for tried a short to. time. Yep. And this is one of, they, as of right now, they know 17. 17 R34s that are, they think 17, I think we're at like 15 or 16, but I think there are 17 on the list. Gotcha. So, so it's very special car. Yeah, super special, really low kilometer. And you know, it's an 01, so I know that, you know, 34s will be legal in 2024. Sure. Which I think is rad. I can't wait to see more of them come. But like the 01, so like V-Spec 2, NERS, M-Specs, you know, you're waiting until 2026 for these to come over. Gotcha. All right, so this car might be my favorite one in your garage. Yeah. Uh, 
What do we got here? It's so, RWB carbon. Yep. We'll go for a year. Yep. All, yeah. Yep. So it's a 91, 964. Um, I actually followed this guy on Instagram for a super long time. And I was just going through like IG one day and Daniel at RMC had this on his story. And I was like, oh my gosh, he's selling it. This is the exact build I wanted to do. Like I said, wheel wise, color obviously. Um, so I'm gonna do some small things on the interior, kind of make it more personal to me. But I just think the guy took great care of it in Japan. He tracked the car pretty frequently, which I think is really cool too. And it's just been such a cool car. And they really, I just think they're so rad. They're just so unique. They Stylistically, there's just nothing like them. Again, probably my favorite car in your collection. Thanks, dude. All right, the 56. Changing change, change yeah. tones a yeah, lot Yeah, the, the, the tone has changed. So this is 56, it's Bel Air. Um, kind of going back to what I was saying about that old hot rodder man, he, he had a 56, that was kind of like my halo car when I was a kid, his black 56, I loved it. And when I went to, I bought this car, it was white, so we had to fix that right away. Uh, Dan, the same guy that painted the 34, did this kind of like... You bought a car that wasn't already bought? I know, I didn't <laughs> tell anyone. <laughs> and then I, uh, he did the Fotina kind of paint job on it, okay. and I went to show my buddy Ray, and he was like, hey, when you were a kid, the motor out of the 56 is still hooked up to the Doug Nash five speed, and I'm putting an LS in that 56 now, so if you want the motor and trans, man, it's yours. I wouldn't sell it to anybody else. So, so I was the, like... the 56 that made you want to buy this one, yep. you got the engine and trans out of that exact car. Yep, out of that exact car. That's cool. So I'm picking the car up, or the motor and engine up, or engine trans up from him, and he's like, hey, you know, it wasn't a big deal in the early 80s when I bought this combo, but this is like a Copo warranty block. It's 427, so just be careful. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. That's so, kind you of, know, that's that's kind of, that's new, new adds a lot of stress to the car, but that's super duper rowdy and it's a five speed. It's just really, really cool. I, I love this car. It's a ton of fun to drive. Very nice, very Thanks, nice. Man. All right, now Witty and I are both wagon guys. Oh yeah. So when I walked in, I saw this, I was like, this is like dream daily right here. What yeah, are yeah. At here? It's a, the, the long roof club, right? It's a E63 AMG, kind of a Merc guy. And I've just always wanted one. And kind of right before the COVID explosion of car prices, right. we ended up, I ended up scoring this thing. Uh, I did the 21 inch HREs on it. Um, did an AWE switch path exhaust on it, but otherwise mechanically stock, it is so fast and it just like puts our, put our dogs in it. We kind of go everywhere with it. You know, it's just such a great car. Wagon things. We need to bring more wagons to the States. Yes, absolutely. Europe I'm, gets way too many. I know. <laughs> I don't know why I never caught on out here, man. I mean, it's like they're fast, they're practical. Like I can't believe people don't love them. Exactly. I just think they're so sick. All right, moving on, just a GT2 RS. Yeah, GT2 and RS. I'm gonna guess this one's your wife's car because it's not black. That's 100% correct. Okay, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, she's just like a, such a hard worker and she's done so much for our life, you know, and she's just awesome. And she wanted a GT3 and they were just skyrocketing in value. She always wanted Miami Blue. She's always loved Miami Blue. Okay. That was a big thing for her. She wanted Miami Blue GT3. But I was like, hey, you know, the differential in price from like the Dot 2 GT3 to this is definitely more, but I don't think it's so much more that we shouldn't look at a GT2 RS. Sure. So she was like, yeah, okay, that's fine. So I ended up, we got the car, picked it up, it came here and I took it for a drive and I'm just like, hey, you need to be extremely careful because it's probably <laughs> one of the, it is one of the fastest cars I've ever driven. That's not like super modified from the factory. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's violently fast, you know? I think it makes like 20, it does. It makes about 26 pounds of boost factory. So it has a boost gauge in it. And I was just blown away when I looked at the boost gauge and I'm like, holy Right. How much so, are these? 700-ish? 700, uh, 700 and okay. has an exhaust on it and um, got her some Christmas present goodies. So it'll be, it'll probably be about 850 crank horsepower when we're done with it. Okay, not bad. Not, not a bad. bad, not a bad wife's car right Yeah, there. yeah, right. All right, so let's go with the turbo. The 996 turbo? Yeah, 996. I know that this is, you know, such a controversial turbo, but this was the turbo that was in showrooms when I was in high school. And um, I just have always loved them. This was the first Porsche I ever bought. Okay. And my buddy Aaron sold it to me. He's like an OCD guy. He kept the car in amazing condition. You guys, nice uh, rotiform three-piece. Yeah, just like a three-piece that he did on it. The car actually, believe it or not, used to be bagged. And um, he put back the static suspension for me before I ended up picking it up. Uh, it's got a tune on it, a CAE shifter, which is really cool. I did a, a, a black edition prototypo wheel in it. And otherwise, I just, this was the first Porsche. And this was like really what created the Porsche bug to bite. All right, so let's go to the SVJ before we go to this one. Okay. So, first of all, we walked in and I saw that it doesn't have the SVJ thing. That's got to be like a, like so a, like an option to have that removed or something. First of all, what year are we looking at here? So we're looking at 19, 19. and it actually did. It had the stickers on it. So I you took the stickers off. I did. <laughs> I, I did. <laughs> 
I'm I, not yeah, a sticker guy. It obviously. was like a thirty-five hundred dollar option, and I just couldn't. I didn't. Those I, stickers were thirty-five hundred dollars. Yeah. So when they when the, when the guy spec the car, he bought them. I just personally am not a sticker guy, so I killed them off. And I know some guys might think that's sacrilegious, but it's an SVJ. We know it is, and you don't have to have a giant sticker blasting you, you know, talking about it, right? That's fair. So I just think these cars, with the demise of the internal combustion engine, I think it's imminent. It's going to happen. These are just the last super raw, great car. And it's, it's truly an impressive car in stock form. And you mentioned you drive the shit out of this thing. You bought it 400 miles? 400 miles, 7, got 7,000. We, we did a rally in it from New York City to Miami. And it was just a blast. It was super comfortable. It's a great touring car, even with, you know, the, the carbon interior and not a lot of, you know, sound deadening anywhere. But it's just such a cool car. And I think it's going to be really one of the last, last great cars that Lamborghini makes. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, R33. <sighs> Yeah. What is this? What are we looking at here? So this is a special car to me. This is, this car was owned by HKS. So they took delivery of this car brand new. This was their test. This, this car was called T002. It was their second test car they ever bought. And essentially they did their, you know, they did basically all the jigs, everything, um, you know, so this was gonna be the test car for all the R33 development. It broke the Sakuba lap record. It held the zero to 300 kilometer an hour record. And like most kind of Japanese demo cars that just kind of sat in their junkyard for about 15 years. Really? Yep. And then my, my friend now, Ken, that worked at HKS, he kind of convinced them, we want to build this car for Tokyo Auto Salon. Uh -huh. So they did. They built the car for Tokyo Auto Salon. They redid the body. They kind of just made it the showcase of all the new parts, right? But it was still a stock internal RB and it was like rear wheel drive. The front drive train wasn't connected. It was kind of just kind of like a SEMA car, just kind of get into Tokyo Auto sure. Salon, right? So the car went up for auction at BH auction. My buddy called me and was like, dude, HKS is auctioning their T002 car, which is super uncharacteristic. It's kind of a secretive company. And I mean, just not a lot of Japanese tuners get off their demo cars. That's like a big research and development piece. Yes, around. right? Yeah. So the, I ended up bidding on the car, I won the car. And then the lady from BH, super nice, is like, the CEO of BH and the CEO of HKS are friends from a long time ago. Uh -huh. And they're really interested in taking the car back and taking it to Sakuba spec. So would you be interested in doing that? And I'm like, yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'll, uh, I'll open the hood for you. They redid this is, the- in This is probably the most modified car that you own. Oh yeah, 100%. Yeah, by far, yeah. So they ended up doing the entire car up. This is, um, this is serial number one of their new step two stroker. And they were just the coolest company in the world to deal with. I'm, I'm a humongous HKS fanboy, just like can nerd out on them for so long. I just have always loved the company. And they built this entire car, basically the entire powertrain. They did it in 42 days. So they were just incredible to work with. Like when they sent over, they sent over pictures every day. I have like probably three or 400 pictures of the car through its development and like its restoration process. And even when they like serial numbered the block, they put my initials at the end of it and they're like, that's your initials. And I'm just like, oh my God, I'm not crying. You know, <laughs> it was just so cool. It was so personal. Max Arito drove the car around Sakuba where it set those records like in 1996. And Max actually, I'll show, when we go back up, I can show it to you. He gave me his race suit that he drove the car with that day. What? Yeah, on the Dang. HKS, the lap timer, it did 31 laps. and. It's just like super historical and all super right. important car. I did say the RW is my favorite car, but yeah. I didn't know all that. Yeah, so. so just like getting to work with them and they've just been so nice. So I'm gonna go to Japan soon and I cannot wait to go there and kind of meet everybody. Um, I'll open the trunk, show you this too. They all, all the guys that built the car, um, once they restored it, they all signed the trunk. So all the guys from HKS. Oh, that's cool. Yep. God, this is such a cool car. Yeah, and I mean, just like, I don't know. This is probably the most special car. This is a car that I'll never sell. All right, this might be my favorite car. Yeah, well, I think we're it's still mine. not done with all your. I think we got one more. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Oh oh sorry, we forgot another car. <coughs> so another Porsche 993 this time. Yeah, so this car was built in Japan by Technical Mate, and it started life as a Carrera 2, and then the owner wanted to do. He did the the Technical Mate Warner kit, which is like the GT2 over fender, the GT2 spoiler. Um, and then it got exported from Japan to a collector in the UK, okay. and then they did a 993 turbo motor in it. So now it's really a proper 993 GT2 tribute. So it's, it's basically without being the, an actual GT2, yes. it has everything else Yeah, there. I think the actual GT2s now are probably in the neighborhood of two to two and a half million dollars, depending on spec yeah. and color. Yeah. So I think you get to a point where you don't really want to drive a house on the street, and it's just... I don't know, it's such a, this is just such a cool car. Super lightweight, kind of got like that 
Porsche like door clunk when you shut it, Ooh. and it's just super duper rad, man. Absolutely right, so love it. So I have it. to comment. What color is this? It's this not is black. no, it's not. It's it breaks the rules, but it is um, Aventura green metallic. So it's Ooh. kind of a really rare color to begin with. Uh, on the registry, they only built four slick top C2s in this color ever. And uh, this is an OEM color from the factory. It's an OEM color from the factory. <sighs> okay. So, you know, they did a great job matching it. Technical, I mean, it's, the Japanese are just really good at everything they do, I think, automotive wise. Like, they're so precise, and the car just came out amazing. So, part of this deal, we have to take your top three cars out, your favorite three, whatever they are. And I don't want to know what two or one are, but I need to know what number three is right now. Number three will be the SVJ. Really? I get to go ride an SVJ. Oh, <laughs> I'm skipping you do. All right, all right. Let's let's load up the SVJ and we'll take that out and I'll ask you a few more questions about it on the road. All right, cool. All right, buddy. First time I've been in an SVJ. Really? Yeah, I'm serious. You're gonna love it, man. All the cars, all the all the Lambos I ride in are all V10 cars. All right, so 2019 SVJ. Yep. Why is this on your number three? What is the reason this is number three? I just think with like you know we were talking about earlier with the modern hybrid approach that all these OEMs are gonna start going to. This is just such a raw and visceral car. Um, it is a complete Lamborghini. It is totally insane looking. It kind of looks like rolling art. Um, it's not very practical. <laughs> There's not a lot of headroom in it. Um, Witty, Witty six. Okay, so Witty six three. He got in the car. Yes. And he's like, I can't fit. And I had to, I had to track this car with a helmet on. And if you look, this is my natural seating position. So when I had the helmet on, I yeah, had to slouch down. Like just turn the wipers on. I had to slouch down like this. It was horrible. So. Yeah, that's kind of why. Luckily, I'm 5'9", so I'm Lamborghini size. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone complains about the single clutch, but it's just such a gnarly gearbox, and it's violent, and it's just like a sequential. So as you can get over that, when you shift this car, you just let your foot off the gas, and you do your shift, just like a sequential. So there's nothing crazy with it. It's super duper easy. I don't know, just can't beat the sound either. It's so good. It was made. And you're not even in our in the RPM. No, now, no, no. Still letting we got we get some temperature in the engine. Um, when we get up here, we'll give it some sauce. But it's like the best. I don't know. It's just hard to describe. But the exhaust was made by Brilliant, which is, I was going to uh, ask you what, the, what exhaust is on it. Yep, it's a Japanese uh, Japanese company. Um, Brilliant exhaust, and it's kind of like, in my opinion, the original F1 exhaust. So I know. Yeah, so number three also, the sound really helps. It adds about 50% <laughs> of the score is the sound. <laughs> so when we were kids, this is where we used to street race over here on Mayo. Before all these apartments and everything was here, this is just desert, man. So you've been here your whole life? All my whole life. I'm an original desert rat, which is kind of weird and rare. <laughs> bangs pops it's like a lot on like newer like m3s and stuff like that when they do like the crackle tunes i'm just like stop it yeah please stop but with these it's like no i know it's this, made to do that this is how it sounds it wasn't tuned this car still runs the factory tune it just is uh just intoxicating Yeah, it's just like never gets old. This is a fun car. I would say that's probably a big reason why it's number three is just driving this and the noises and just, I could just, it would never get old to me. Ever, man. It's just a really, really fun car. Like I said, super composed. It's just not super dramatic. It looks, it's not as dramatic as it looks. That's what I'll say. Okay. Yeah. God, this feels like just one of those cars that it'll be going 100 and you just, 
it just oh, feels okay. it, you're just cruising at 40. It gets away from you like how fast you just start cruising. And then another thing that really adds with the stability with that four wheel steering is under 88 miles an hour, the wheels steer like this, right? right? But over 88 miles an hour, they steer like this to add stability. So Lamborghini said it adds 17 feet of length and stability to the car after that 88 miles an hour because they just keep uh, just longer wheelbase, right? right? So when they steer like that, you don't have that twitchiness. The and then the car just kind of moves that way. Yep, and then all of the active aero after 100 miles an hour, if you start to do input to turn, like at a track, what it does is it turns off all the front aero and it gives you all the downforce in the rear. So the active aero that's working is insane. That tube in the center, um, it lets air come in and then it bleeds it underneath the wing. So there's little slots in the bottom of the wing that air bleeds through to reduce drag. When they close, it puts air over the wing. That's wild. This would not get old, dude. Never. I would drive this every day. Never. Thank you. Of course, my dude. first SVJ ride. Of course, man. That was awesome. But when you come back out and you have more time, man, you're more. I know you've drove some sick cars. You're more than welcome to take it for a rip, bro. Damn, Fred, I tell you what, that's the best thing we've heard so far. How was that? That was uh, one of the best sounding, be the, the best sounding stock car I've ever ridden in, period. I think so. Yeah. There's nothing like a V12. For, for sure, Never for sure. Never replaced, ever. So this is number three. Yep. We're gonna find out what number two is right now. I don't know what it is, but I don't know how it's better than this. I'll it's gonna you. have to be really good to stand up to this beauty. Exactly. <laughs> All right. All right, so SVJ was number three. Yep. What's your number two? Number two is gonna be the 993. The 993G, okay, the tribute car. Okay, yep. so we're gonna take that out then. Oh, I forgot to ask on the, on the, on the first one, what's the key fob look like on this one? The key fob? Just a key. No fob. Re re regular key stuff. Regular key. Regular, regular key Before the days of transponders and, uh, yeah, you could have gone in 60 seconds to steal these cars back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is cool because it's just like super Radwood era. All the analog stuff. The car still feels small. Oh, yeah, like new cars feel you super You could definitely big. take this to a Radwood and do very well. Yeah, man. Everybody would love this thing. I just really like that about this car. It feels super 90s. And as an old man, I love the 90s. A casual Ferrari FF. Yeah, just way. like Scottsdale things. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so out of all your cars, 20, 30 cars, whatever it is, why is this one your number two? Just the Radwood vibes are so hard. I think that this is when Porsche was really like power to weight ratio was a big deal. And um, it's a super light 400 wheel. It doesn't even have power steering, but the wheel is so light. How much does it weigh? Um, they're like 2,600 and some change. Really? Yep, so, you know, you really start to feel like, yo, the, the input and the wheel, it is like a go-kart, and it just handles like a go-kart, too. And I mean, open disclosure, although I knew a lot about Porsches, I was not collecting them. And I just loved the 993 always. It was just such a beautiful car to me. And then once I drove this car, even though it's not black, it will break all of the black car exceptions, and it'll, okay. it'll probably okay. stay around in the family for quite a while has Project Mew brake pads on it that scream like banshees, so I'm super sorry if that's <laughs> Race car up. stuff, it's okay. race car stuff. Okay, up the video. Oh, you're good. Well done. Thanks, man. Whoa. I appreciate yeah, I it. I retired from Porsche North America, I was there 25 years. What? Ago. Yeah. No way. Yeah, yeah. That's so cool, dude. Uh, What'd you do there? I was a uh, chief operating officer. Chief operating, uh, okay. Yeah, I'm in charge of sales and marketing and operations. So. Holy sh yeah. We just stopped at the gas station and some guy comes up and he used to work for Porsche of North America. And then another guy's over here walking around getting video, photos and videos of the car. Pretty good car. All right, so this is kind of like when you were in, when you were growing up, this was like your poster car. Yes. That's why it's number two. Now, what does this car do well and what does it not do well at all? So not well, probably doesn't love the summer with like air conditioning and sitting in traffic idling here. Okay, okay. Um, what it does do well is just the overall driving experience, handling, 
all of the things that I think uh, modern cars lack, this car makes up for. I mean, also, you don't have to get in and turn off any nannies. This is just, the car is set to kill you, right? You know, always right out of the, from the gate, Right from the factory. <laughs> A real widow maker, you know? So nothing too dramatic. No, but it feels but, good, Yeah, though. it just it gets up to freeway speeds. It's a super, like I said, super balanced. Fast cars are a blast. I love fast cars. But again, like, this is just a nice, relaxing car. It's not trying to harm you. Air conditioning actually works pretty decent in it. Um, just a good overall balance machine. I'm so sorry. And those brakes somehow are still loud with the windows up. <laughs> yes. The one thing the windows won't cure is that brake noise. all the buttons everything it just all looks not worn it doesn't i have to give you know japan owner the first owner so i think a lot has a lot to do with it one owner in japan two in the uk and then me so i just have to thank the the car gods that those guys were kind of purists and you can tell they really took good care of the car all right thank you very much yeah dude of course 993 wide but gorgeous car gorgeous car i'm excited to see what number one is god and that door do you hear that door slam hang on do you hear that they don't make them like that anymore, folks. They really don't. That one was not as loud, but boy, it was nice looking at from the rear end. How'd you like that one? Oh, this, this thing, it's just like everything's just like, when I was a kid, this was like a brand new Porsche when I was a kid. Yeah. And everything inside of it, like all the buttons, everything just looks You like sound it calmer. It sounds like this really brought you back. <laughs> It's just like it's just like a really really cool car to to go for a ride in. It's a and beautiful everything's car. just like pristine on it. Everything's nice. It's just the white body on it's perfect. The color is great. Just you look at the inside, you kind of get in. It gives you the vibe like you're hopping in with your mom or dad when you're it's, a kid. Yeah, like kind of go into some Radwood, so like '80s '90s yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, it has that whole the whole writing in the car is that whole vibe. Yeah. So I like this car. We're gonna find out what his number one is. I have an idea what number one is, but I don't know. So we're gonna find out if the SVJ is number three and this is number two. We'll see what number one is. All right. So SVJ was number three. Yep. The 993 was number two. What out of the 20 some odd cars we got left is your number one out of all the cars you got here? Number one. Hands down. HKS I was thinking he was gonna say that. I was hoping you were gonna say that. This is it. How often do you drive it on the street? Um. When the, when the weather's nice, actually, it's pretty frequently. We're okay. as far as I can go on the five gallon fuel cell. Okay, okay. So, That's a lot fair. of stops That's at fair. the gas station. Okay, so I guess this is a whole process. This is like a race car to get into and drive, right? Yes, yeah. We're gonna we'll get in four point harnesses and uh, probably talk at a very high level of volume. Okay, to speak I'll to adjust each other. the mics for yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, so number one, HKS R33. Let's go. HKS R33, here we go. Is that the door pull right there? That's what yeah. It, that's what it is? They thought of everything. <laughs> Got a door opener in here? Yeah, that's right, dude. <laughs> and the best part, power windows, dude. No way! Yeah. <laughs> when they did it, I was like, can you please put power windows so I can roll them up and down? And they did headlights. So they hooked up headlights, tail lights, brake lights, even the reverse works. So that's freaking awesome. I definitely feel like I'm in a race car, for sure. Yeah, it's uh, only the necessities are in this thing. about 750 700? 
I take a lot of pride in knowing how to drive manual cars. Yeah. <laughs> but this is a like triple play Tilton with a flywheel that is like the size of just long enough to go and have the starter engage it. So this was like relearning how to drive manual. Yes, because it is no dual mass flywheel with already a crazy clutch. So it is just like, when people say, oh, the clutch is in or out, yeah. it is the definition of that. <laughs> I've stalled this car more times than I care to admit. And I drive it a fair amount. I just, it's almost like you can almost never get used to it. So whenever I'm on an incline, I'm like on the e-brake and just like fingers are crossed, you know what I mean? <laughs> Not very comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like a race car. Definitely yes, feels definitely like a race, car. race car things. because this car had spent its whole life in Japan. So you're like, I'm not worthy kind of thing? Almost, right? right? Because you're just like, I don't know, like, I just didn't feel like it, you know? But I, I think it's it went to a good home. I take really good care of it. It's so important to me. And I told them I'd honor the car forever. I would never sell the car, and I, I have no intention of ever selling this car. In fact, you know, when my time is over here, um, this car is going to go back to HKS, and it's going to be in their museum. So I'm going to have the car go back. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> Like, it's kind of uncomfortable, but it's still not that bad, even for being totally gutted, you know? Well, like I said, I've ridden into several race cars that were gutted, <laughs> sounded like this, but it's like knowing that this is, this wasn't something that somebody just cut the floor out of to save weight. Like, this was purpose-built yes. race car by HKS in Japan, yeah. their project car. And then it's wild to me that this car is, like you said, allowed to be here in the States. I know. Owned by a private person. Collector. I know. To my knowledge, it's the only demo car that's ever been sold by HKS. That's so wild. This is the only, and I know for sure, this is the only private customer build they've ever done. So they don't ever work on cars. You can't take your car to HKS and have it get built. Um, this is the only car they've ever built for a private consumer. Wow. Thank you 
so much. No problem, dude. This car, special. It's something else. Thanks, man. Just, just think that, it, like, like I said several times, I've ridden in race cars. I've ridden in cars that were built by people. High-end cars, 2,000 horsepower cars. This is just like, I feel like it's... It's just a weird feeling to be in a car like this. Yeah, it's like kind of feels super historic when you it, get to ride in it. You exactly. Know? It's like I, I'm picturing cars that I would see run at like a, a historical hill climb. Be like, this yeah. is a car I would see like they would bring a factory driver to drive it and do something crazy with it. And you only see it once. It's like I just got to ride on that, ride in that on the streets of Arizona. Yeah, like when this car set out before, it was just only purpose of this car was to be, they called it the record breaker. That's what it was auctioned as. That was its internal code. It was just a record breaking car. So... It's just cool to have it here, and again, kind of going back to what we said, I just feel um, super honored that HKS uh, gave me the opportunity to own the car. Absolutely. Shout out to HKS, because yeah. thanks, otherwise I wouldn't be riding this thing. Yeah, we wouldn't be here. Yeah. This thing's awesome. No again, doubt. Again, thank you Anytime, so dude. much. Absolutely. Buddy. Oh, P1 disconnects. <laughs> <laughs> Almost went to the wrong side there. Oh, did you? All right, so that was definitely the coolest thing that was rolling next to us. Okay, so... Building boost and then yeah. letting her rip, that was nice. That car, it's, it's it's special because I just talked to him about it. It's like, so it's like a piece of history that I just got to ride in on the street in Arizona. Thank you so much again yeah, for showing us your whole garage, yeah. your, your top three, all that stuff. Uh, what's coming, what's next? What are you adding to the garage? The garage, cars, what, what, what do you got next? I'm gonna quote my friend Jason and he said, I don't think I've ever woke up and said, today's the day I buy a car. So I don't really know. Maybe like whatever <laughs> kind of comes about next, you know? Well, again, yeah. thank you very much for letting us come Anytime, and time, man. ruin your whole day. Nah, make, dude, I had a great make, day. Awesome, awesome. All right, so part of these 1320 garages, we're gonna start doing this more and more often because we wanna give them some merch. So we, we hook you up with, uh, we got a couple of hats for you. I don't know if you wear, yeah, obviously you wear hats, do, but yeah. there you go. Let's see. We got a couple tea ta key tags, money pit. I'm sure you have at least a couple of those. Definitely. A f around and find out car. I'm sure you have at least one of those. That's and cute. he's got a, you definitely have a freaking race car. Uh, put that on one of your American cars, I guess. American flag 1320 sticker. F around and find out uh, plate frame. And then this is probably the thing that you're probably not that excited. You will be later. This is our XL drying towel. All right. You could dry literally every car in here and not wring it out. I swear. It's like the best. You could dry like an entire car you could... freshly out of the wash. There you, you go. No wet streaks or anything. There you go. This thing will suck up all the water. You the car can come out of literally like dripping wet and this will get all the water. No problem. So there you go. Awesome, man. There you go. We're going to hook guys up with merch, maybe some uh, street shine stuff, but there we go. All right, again, shout out to Jordan for letting us uh, mess with his cars all day, ride around with him, check out his garage, everything. If there is a garage or a collection you know about that we need to check out, leave in the comments below. We'll see you guys in the next episode.